So this is a really interesting situation. I think that plays out for a lot of guys, whether they've been doing this uh, for a while or they are brand new to it. And that is this misconception that by doing hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of approaches, that is just going to ultimately get you the best results and desensitize yourself. Now, in some cases, yes, that is true. But I also would make the argument that just having really good quality conversations is going to do you more wonders and do you better than just, you know, going in, giving a compliment, not knowing what to say and then running away afterwards. If you're going in to fewer conversations, but you are trying to have an actual conversation and by actual, I mean that back and forth chit chat or flirting or being able to talk about topics that maybe you've got in common or something that you've got of interest, then you're going to learn quite a number of things just from those experiences. And it's great to be able to go into an interaction and walk away and say, you know what, I learned something from that, rather than almost doing this like checklist sort of behavior of like, yep, all right, there's another one. All right, let me try and do another approach and another one. And thinking maybe when you're going out to practice, like you've got to reach some kind of quota if I so like for in fact for example when I've worked with guys and or I've met up with guys on the street and they've told me about how their approaching or uh, cold approaching journey is going and I say to them or I ask them like on average like how many people are you talking to when you go out now if someone says to me that they've probably had maybe like 10 or 15 in the afternoon or day that they've gone out then I'm pretty happy with that because that tells me that, well, it tells me a number of things. Either they are having a lot of decent conversations or perhaps they may be being uh, uh, kind of picky with who they want to be talking to. But at least it also gets me to uh, further ask them questions. I'm like, okay, well, out of those 15 that you were talking to, how many were really good conversations? I'm not worried about the phone numbers, but I'm more interested in how many good conversations did you have with people? And then if they say they had like five, I'm like, that's brilliant. That's really good. Because the likelihood is that there's going to have been about maybe five or six that were that were their warm-up approaches. And then there's going to be this kind of like mix of strong approaches, with just maybe compliments or people just showing that they weren't interested in having a conversation. And I'm like, that's brilliant. That is what an average guy should be doing or an average day for a guy should be. That's not fair me saying the other way there. But if a guy says to me, oh, I've done like about 70, 80 approaches today, that isn't great. But then again, that can also depend on what his goal is for the day. If he's trying to go out and get phone numbers and get himself dates and stuff, then that's not great. If he's someone who's just trying to become desensitized to at least stopping and giving a compliment, 100%, brilliant, fantastic, because that's someone who has gone out with a goal to focus on a particular thing. So when you're at that stage of looking to ask for phone numbers, then of course you need to be having good, solid conversations with people. Looks and stuff will only get you so far, but it's being able to build a relationship with someone or build rapport and a connection with someone. That is what is going to get you better results with the women that you're speaking to. And the only way you can do that is by spending a bit of time talking to people. You can't be just literally running and giving a compliment and then she says thank you and then you just ask for the phone number and she's going to be like, yeah, okay, that's great. Let's do it. And, you know, you're going to have this happily ever after situation play out. That won't work. That won't happen. You have to have a conversation. There has to be banter. There has to be some flirting. There has to be some sexual tension and chemistry. And you get that by spending time talking to someone, even if it's a couple of minutes, but you get that through spending time with people and building a connection. So what can guys do to try and shift from maybe 
doing a crazy amount of approaches to ones that are a lot more quality and have more substance to them. Well, I think first of all, you've got to consider perhaps maybe being, depending on where you're at stage wise. And actually, I think probably for this point, I'm going to rule out the beginners. If you're someone who isn't yet at that stage of having really good conversations, then you need to just desensitize yourself first to being able to approach, to being able to stop someone. And it's okay however many approaches you need to do. And because you're only really looking at trying to have a 30 second, one minute interaction with people anyway, it really doesn't matter how many you get in. In fact, the faster you can get yourself desensitized, the better. So if you do 200 approaches in a day, brilliant, that's great because you're not looking for a quality conversation. You are just looking for a quantity experience. But when you're then shifting to trying to get uh, yourself on dates and ask for phone numbers and have relationships with people, then you need to shift into having more quality conversations. So what can you do? I think, first of all, try if possible, if you're at the stage where you can afford to be picky, be a bit more selective with the women that you want to talk to. There's something to be said when you are talking to someone that you are genuinely really attracted to, as opposed to someone that you are just going in for the sake of it and having a conversation. For guys who are very new, you don't get that luxury. You need to practice your confidence and your social skills. It's good to talk to everyone. In fact, I will probably do a video on this tomorrow. But for guys who have got the practice in, you need to just try and maybe focus on talking to women that you are attracted to. Be that bit more picky because you will feel the anxiety a little bit more. You will certainly have to challenge your comfort zones just that bit more and it will put you on edge. And in fact, it will also help you to that next phase of becoming desensitized to beauty, which is really the main thing that so many guys are probably more afraid of, more afraid, I think, than having conversations uh, or socializing with strangers. But work on that. Consider that. So being picky with women is a first thing. The second thing, when you do see someone that you're attracted to, try and give yourself a rule of finding out three really interesting things about that woman before you consider asking for the phone number. It's a homework that I give to so many guys anyway. It works wonders. I really like it. It's something that I've done as well over the years myself. And it's just a good rule of thumb to be able to build enough of a connection and then to be able to verbally justify why you want the phone number. Being able to say, you know what? I really like this, this, and this about you. I've got to take you out on a date sometime or I'd love to take you out. You seem like a really cool girl. And she will appreciate that as well. And it also shows that you've been actively listening, that you have shown interest in her, that you've been curious of her. And because of that, that has now qualified her and built attraction between the two of you. And usually when you've got some then established um, uh, rapport, then people are going to be more obliged to actually hand over their phone number and at the very least have a conversation with you and decide if they want to go uh, on a date via the whole texting process. Um, so definitely that is just something extra for you to consider there. Um, is there anything else that I would probably uh, recommend there for you? So we've got um, being a bit more picky, um, try and give yourself that three rule uh, justification before you ask for a phone number. And I think also the main one as well is to just try and be more improvish and not say the same thing over and over with every girl that you're talking to. And in fact, I experienced this the other day with uh, a client actually from Christian um, who I was filming with on the street and he had fallen into this trap of just saying this same compliment over and over again. And in fact, it then became very difficult for him to try and improv away from this particular compliment. So the compliment that he said was, um, uh, and, and I do apologize if you are watching this, uh, was that he said that, oh, you look really serene. 
Now, that's quite an out there compliment. It's a very difficult one to try and justify uh, or explain to someone why they look serene. And also with a place like London, with it being very multicultural, not everyone's going to understand the word serene. And the last thing you want to have to do is explain what you mean by a compliment. And an explanation is very different to a justification because you're having to go even more in depth there. And then someone's like having to try and process that. Whereas the other one's like, oh, wow, thank you for for acknowledging this look about me. And um, it's, it's to be honest, it's a trap that so many guys fall into. And it is something that does also make it very difficult to have any kind of conversation. Um, if you are using lines and routines, it will cause you to stay trapped in using lines and routines. And in fact, you're not going to develop your social skills social intelligence or your conversation skills or your flirting or develop your personality and confidence in your conversations if you are reliant on them. They, yes, they might be tried and tested, but they are the coaches that you are trying to copy them from. That is from their personality, not yours. And if you don't try and at least figure out and ask things or say the things that you want to say, then it's going to be very difficult to build rapport and flirt and whatnot as well. So that's just something else to consider. And that's probably also why I really like the three curiosity justification rule, because it forces you to have a very different conversation with every person that you're speaking to. Whereas like if let's say one girl you stop and she says that she does uh, dancing, then that means you need to be asking questions about dancing. Or if one girl says that she's from Brazil and another one says that she's from Spain, then you would be asking very different questions about them rather than trying to create or talk about a topic that tries to put all of these women in literally just one box and expect oh, if I say this, then I will get this result rather than thinking like, okay, well, actually, if she does this, I would be curious to ask her about the culture, the food, the nightlife, uh, the dating life, you know, what she's doing in London or what she's doing here. Why did she get into the things that she's passionate about? It doesn't give you the opportunity unless you genuinely break away from the lines and routines and you ask what you want to ask. And that's what creates a quality conversation, showing interest in another person and asking things that you are curious about. Like, what would you want to know about that other person that tells you how amazing they are and how worthwhile they are to go on a date with? Now, yes, you'll get the guys who are going to be very superficial and they just want to go out and they just want to sort of date to sleep with women. But just from experience and definitely guys that I know it only gets you so far. And I want to definitely be helping the guys who are looking for at least a little bit more than that. I mean, every guy each to their own, but at least a little bit more than just the um, the the look uh, and aesthetics of a person. Let's try and see if we can learn to have proper conversations and definitely that will help you with your anxiety. It will certainly help you to build better relationships with people further on down the line. And the more that you're able to practice being curious about people and have great conversations, then give it three months, six months, a year. You will have amazingly good conversations with people rather than still a year later going in and saying, oh, excuse me, can I tell you something really quickly? What I noticed about you was X, Y, Z. You know, again, it will only get you so far. So I think I'll probably end the video there. And um, there's a few at least good takeaways, I think, for you. The main one being just try being more curious about the women that you want to speak to and ask genuine questions about them rather than just trying to repeat the same thing over and over. And if you can do that, you will have much better conversations with people. They'll be of higher quality and you'll also find you'll be just working on your social skills and confidence in even more as your improv improves. 
And then this thing of just having a hundred approaches done in a day will be a thing of a past. And you'll find as well, you'll be spending probably less time going out and speaking to people. You might then only need to go out a couple of hours in the week rather than like, like doing like every single night or something of doing like four or five hours a night and you will be getting even better results. You won't need to be speaking to hundreds of women a week. You might only need to speak to a dozen and get the exact same results for what you are hoping for, which maybe might be like one to three dates a week or something. So just consider that. Consider having better quality conversations with people Especially if you're at that stage now where you are desensitized with the whole cold approaching and stopping process, you know, it's time to actually work on your conversation skills. Be uh, be a better conversationalist, uh, he says as he nearly mumbles. Um, and I can assure you, you will certainly get much better dating results with the women that you're speaking to. So if you can, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video as well. Are you someone who's at that stage who is still working on the cold approaching and so they need to get the numbers in so they can get desensitized to that? Or are you at that stage now where you should be having proper conversations with people, speaking to less women, but having much better interactions? I'd love to hear below. But other than that, I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. Thank you very much for watching and look forward to the next video from me.